Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the special council uh, meeting of Monday, April 26, 2021 to order. First off, are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, uh, we move to number three, the approval of the agenda. Need a mover and seconder. Moved by Councillor Dunstall. Seconder, Councillor Cadwell. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, second by Councillor Cadwell. Resolve that the agenda for the special council meeting of April 26, 2021 be approved. All in favor? It's carried. No delegations tonight, so we move to um, the consent agenda. Councillor Bothwell, I'd like to lift the uh, your uh, mayor the five uh, A, the appointment of property standards committee report, and five B, the LPAT appeal eleven Lakeview, please. Okay, that's so noted. So we'll just need a mover and seconder for the rest of the consent. Moved by Councillor Frake, second, Councillor Dunstall. Moved by Councillor Frake, second by Councillor Dunstall. Resolved that the council hereby approves the following item and the consent item be approved at the recommendation is contained therein. DRS 21-13 award contract RFP 2021-01 PRC design and construction administration for the Casablanca Waterfront Park. All in favor? That's carried. So Sarah, you said we just moved to the other two on this? We're going to uh, go to the banking authorities now. All right. So we're moving to number six report uh, uh, signing authorities. Melanie, you have the report? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. I wanted to just provide a few opening remarks to the report you're reviewing today. Um, I did listen very intently to Council's discussion last Monday night, um, wanting some additional information on bank signing authorities. And this past week, I've done a comprehensive review um, and done my best to document and answer all of those questions for you in the report that's in front of you today. So the report in front of you provides a history of signing authorities, um, from prior to March 30th and everything from March 30th to today. It also includes a recommended amendment to the bylaw to allow the town to move forward. So I wanna acknowledge that through this the past week, it's clear that there are some inconsistencies between documentation that existed at, compared to what was actually occurring. And so for full and transparent disclosure, I've put all of that outlined, all of that in Appendix B to the report for you today. So you can see all the different documents that existed and how the signing authorities were laid out in those documents. Um, I, I do wanna note for council that there were inconsistencies found both before March 30th, as well as during the transition. This wasn't something that just occurred in the past few weeks. Um, if you look at, at the existing state on March 30th, um, there were some inconsistencies in the documentation at that date as well. And I wanna be really clear for council today that those inconsistencies are in the documents. So between the bylaw that the bank had on file versus the bylaw that council had approved or between the signing authorities that the bank had on file and the bylaw. These are not inconsistencies in action. I did go back as your treasurer and review all of the payments that have been made between March 31st and today, and I did not see anything out of order. Um, actions of staff on March 31st to update those signing authorities with the bank and, and ensure that staff members could sign checks and, and release electronic fund transfers. While they were inconsistent with your bylaw, they were reasonable and did ensure that the town could continue to make payments for goods and services during this transitional period. So I'm hoping that that in the uh, report um, will prove useful to council, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions on the history. Um, what I'd like to outline from here is how we can move forward um, and ensure that all of our documentation is aligned um, from here on out. 
So in essence, we want to make sure that our bylaws agree to what is on file with the bank and as well as what all staff are doing um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So in order to give council comfort that the bylaw in front of you today is appropriate, we did seek legal counsel um, and legal counsel has reviewed the amended bylaw as is presented to you in Appendix A. And they have confirmed that retroactive application of this bylaw to March 30th is appropriate and that there's nothing in the Municipal Act that um, you know, uh, does, doesn't allow council to do that. Um, as your treasurer, I also want to assure you that I've reviewed the segregation of duties in the payment process which in currently includes the manager of procurement both the past few weeks as well as uh, going forward. And I see no control weaknesses. So when you're reviewing segregation of duties, it's important to consider all steps in the process. Bank signing is just one step in that process. Um, we've gone back and looked at everything from how payments are entered, who enters them, who can set up vendors. And I, there is no weakness in that we have appropriate segregation of duties in our process. I did discuss all of this with our external auditors as well um, via phone conversations and confirmed via emails and they, they agreed with my recommendations. So I wanted to share that context with you um, and to let you know that the bylaw that's the amendment to the bylaw that's in front of you this evening in Appendix A um, will allow the town to move forward in a clear and consistent way. So making sure that the bylaws on file for the town as well as everything that's on file with the bank are consistent um, and, and allows us to move forward and continue executing uh, business of the town. So those are my opening remarks. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or provide any clarifications as required. Councillor Bothwell. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, and thank you, Melanie, for making the efforts to get it right because had we passed this bylaw at the last meeting it would not have been correct um, and as I identified some serious concerns there you've also mentioned that there's some new internal controls put in place the bylaw has now um, correctly identified the chief executive officer instead of town manager as well as the positions that are delegated on the on uh, going to be delegated as any uh, manager position within finance not recognizing that the manager of procurement is not a manager of finance, which was one of the questions that came up at the last discussion. Um, I think it's very important that we go back to how this happened and um, what actions were taken on March 31st. And that's the most serious concern that I have because um, regardless of the legal, um, the legal document that provides that a bylaw can be retroactive, um, as long as it doesn't con contravene any other federal, provincial, or any other types of uh, legislation or laws. And the bank, as most banks do, um, has a corporate resolution document that would have had to have been signed by members of staff in order to invoke the signing authorities. And that document that the bank asks the signing officers to sign when they change names on it clearly says that the signing officer is attesting to the fact that um, it's sort of that there's a certified a true copy of a resolution duly passed by the board of directors of the corporation and that this resolution is now in force and effect and unamended so they're basically signing that the town as council as a corporation has passed a resolution to um, affect these signing officers so on March 31st, when the staff person signed these banking resolutions and changed the names, they did not have the authority to do so. And I don't know who directed them to do so, but the document that's a legal document at the bank was signed without council's um, corporate resolution being passed. And they attested to that on, on, I think, two occasions, March 31st and April 6th. So there's a legal requirement that we did not meet here uh, that that whoever put this in place, the CAO or whoever, um, did not uh, consult with council immediately, did not pass a resolution by council prior to these staff persons going to um, sign and change and amend those this, the names on that uh, on the signing officers. And the other thing to be very I'm very concerned about is the only person who technically could even have gone and done that on those dates would have been the mayor. Because as the lawyer, as uh, John Maskren has said, the only bylaw that is in force and in place was 1637. 
And the only person who still had signing authority at that time under that bylaw is the mayor, nobody else. So there's, that's the most serious concern is that some staff were directed to go sign these documents um, and attest to them legally as being truthful that a corporate resolution had been passed by council on those dates and there had not been one in force. Um, I would also ask Melanie, if you also observed the actual resolutions yourself, did you see all the banking documents yourself? And I, and so, so through the mayor, um, I did review all of the emails that went back and forth with the bank um, being remotely. I, I saw the, the scan signatures that were sent to the bank um, on those dates to set up those signing authorities. And I would comment that the staff that um, put this in place on March 31st did have a lengthy conversation with the bank on how the best way to proceed given the situation um, for the corporation. And um, they did talk with the bank about the town clerk being a municipally um, enforced position and that that was appropriate uh, to put them as signing authority. Um, and that based on our existing bylaw, the most senior person in finance, therefore the acting director of finance on March 31st was the manager of procurement. And, and we felt that both those pieces or, or staff felt that both those pieces um, more appropriate proxies of the bank accepted that conversation and accepted those signing authorities at that time. I agree completely that that is, you know, not necessarily perfect dotting of I's and crossing of T's and there are inconsistencies there, but the staff that did sign those documents on March 31st, being the town clerk and the manager of procurement, in my opinion, did do so in good faith. I'm not sure who directed them to do so, but the bank cannot tell them to sign and the bank cannot tell them to attest to something that is falsified, okay? So I can't imagine that they would have said, um, they probably said, yeah, you can be a signing officer, no problem. But without knowing what the corporate resolution was and what council had passed or not passed, and I don't know if that was provided to them, to the bank. So, you know, it's not on the bank to tell our staff how to complete this form properly. It's up to our CAO and our staff understand what they're what they're attesting to so no i have a serious concern about you know who you know you can't say that the bank said it was okay we have an obligation as council to ensure that whatever our staff do is um within the framework of, of financial the highest financial scrutiny um the other thing i have is um you mentioned that you had seen all the documents so what day were you actually put on as a signing officer the six or the uh, April 6th is when council passed um, the motion to appoint me as treasurer and April 7th, we emailed the bank and, and I signed a signature card on April 7th. Was your name added um, on the 6th or not? On the 7th. Um, and you're gonna, you'll attest to that? Yes. That the two staff persons did not sign a banking resolution on the 6th? I do not believe so. Um, not that I've seen. I, we just simply signed a new bank signature card and had my name added um, on, on the 7th. That was the addition of me as the treasurer onto the banking documents. Okay. Just want to, because you said you've seen all the documents. So you would have seen something signed by the clerk and, and uh, Suzanne Madden on the 6th, if it was there then with your name on it. Yes, so the documents that went back to the bank on April 7th um, was my signature card with my name and uh, Suzanne and um, the clerk um, authorizing my addition to the banking agreement. Just, just a clarification there, was that April 6th or April 7th? That's why I'm confused about. It's April 7th. So April 6th in the evening, that's when council had their meeting. So Tuesday, April 6th is when I was appointed as treasurer. And so the next day we reached out to the bank and had my name added to the documentation. So it occurred on April 7th. So you're With saying the there's no corporate resolution at the bank dated April 6th with Suzanne Matter and Sarah Kim's name on it with your name added. I, I do not believe so though. Their names would have been added on um, March 31st. So okay. Suzanne and Sarah Kim were added on March 31st and I was added on April 7th. I think there's a conflict there. I'll just leave that with you because I, I don't I don't believe that's what the bank has on file. Okay. Um, and, and that would be interesting because if it was if your name was put on the sixth, 
as you know, we didn't pass it until the evening of April 6th, right? So that would be correct. Yeah. And, I, and I know for a fact that was not the case, Councillor, because I didn't go in to sign an actual signature card until Wednesday. So I was in isolation on Monday and Tuesday, so I did not drive into the town until Wednesday. So I know that my signature could not have been on file prior to the, the Wednesday when I did sign a signature card. Okay. So Mary, she said a few times it's April 7th when she signed it. Thank you. I was asking. Right. Thank you, CEO. Yeah. I was asking about the corporate resolution documents of the bank and what, what dates those were. So that's fine. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. The only other thing I would like to suggest is that um, the, the motion as it's the recommendations that are being put forward to us tonight um, are asking for us to retroactively approve these signing authorities, which is validating something that in my mind would be, would be um, validating actions that were taken um, by the CEO or by staff that were inappropriate at the time, according to the best financial practices. And I wouldn't agree with that. I will recommend if the clerk would look at amending the bylaw to date it effective April the 26th. And I would have no problem with saying effective April 26th, that the bylaw would be in place. So um, I will leave that with, um, with the clerk to see whether that motion can be, can, uh, can be amended to to do that. Thank you. CAO, did you want to speak again? Yes, thank you, Mayor, if I may. Um, I want to be sure that when you ask who directed the staff to look into this on March 31st, it was myself. I'm fully responsible and accountable to ensure that morning when we met as a team to eliminate all operational risk and look at the most logical two people to be the signatories at that time with the bank to avoid any emergencies or, or uh, risks in the operations. So the most logical person was of course the, the town clerk because she's statutorily appointed and signs all sorts of legal documents and contracts on behalf of the municipality and the most senior finance person at that time. So looking at a significant change like this that morning, you know, I, I did make that call and I'm totally accountable but I will say we didn't we didn't drop the ball on any of the operations and things ran smoothly from that perspective. So I just wanted to be sure that I was the one accountable uh, counselor in there. Thank you, Councillor Vain. Um, I have a question for John Mascara. And John, are you there still? Yes, I am. Sorry about that, Councillor Vane. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Uh, my quick question is, um, you've just heard everything that was said. Do we have any concerns here? Or are we okay to pass this bylaw the way it is with April 6th? I, I don't have a concern, but I just want to get your opinion. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you to Councillor Vane, um, clearly the municipality has the ability to uh, put in place a, a retroactive bylaw and doing so to, uh, to the date uh, whether it's March 31st or April 6th, or I'm sure I've even forgotten the date, you can certainly do that. And it would, in fact, uh, uh, authorize all actions as of that date. Uh, there's nothing in the Municipal Act or elsewhere that I can find that would preclude uh, Council from doing so. Thank you for that clarification, John. I appreciate the legal opinion. Uh, just just a further clarification to, to that, John. Um, much like uh, the CAO asked me to call the special council meeting tonight, would it have been much more open, transparent, and cleaner to have uh, uh, the CAO ask me on March 31st or April 1st uh, to, to actually get this together and get this all cleaned up then, in your opinion? Mr. Mayor, it, it, that certainly could have happened. Uh, and uh, would it have made things maybe a little bit more clear and there wouldn't have had to be, be the need for retroactive application? Certainly, I can't argue with that comment. Thank you. Councillor Frank. Uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, I, I think we're treading on very dangerous territory here because we're setting a precedent uh, we all know that it's council that has the authority, only council that has the authority to authorize the signing signatures for the bank. We just said by passing this bylaw tonight, we're setting a precedent for anything going forward that 
the CAO can just direct anybody to go to the bank or wherever he wants to do uh, on, on behalf of, of council. He doesn't speak for council. So yes, I agree with, 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 with Mayor Jordan. I mean, there was nothing stopping the CAO from calling the mayor or going to the bank with the mayor to sign off those things. Because I think that the CAO also has signing authority. But the thing is, you could have called the mayor, we could have called a special meeting and we could have sorted this out immediately. Instead, here we are a number of weeks later, still talking about it. And I do not believe, even though it may not say so in the Municipal Act, and John, I've, I've, John Masquin, I've got your book here and I, you're right, it's not in there. Uh, but I, I can have a problem with that because in the corporate world, for example, you don't backdate invoices. You don't backdate sales orders. You don't try to cheat the system at the end at, so, so, that the, so that you have a better quarter or your, or your, or your, or your financial records are, are looking good to the shareholders. That's not the way it works. So all of a sudden we're making this, 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 this what I call a, a fupa by allowing this to happen. And I don't think we should. I think, I think we need to call a halt to it right here. I do have a couple of questions for, for John, if I could. Uh, I mean, are you there, John? Yep. Uh, you know, is this consistent with, with our fiduciary duties, you know, to pass a resolution like this? I mean, we're sworn to, to uphold those fiduciary duties. And I feel right now by us allowing this to happen and just willy-nilly signing off, you know, something that happened two or three weeks ago, backdated, is just not in, in, in accordance with what we swore our oath to. So I, I have a problem with that. I, I'd like your comments on that, John, if you don't mind. Sure. Mr. Mayor, through you to Councillor Frake. Uh, first of all, Councillor Frake, I don't believe it's, uh, it's a backdating. Uh, I believe it's simply giving ratification uh, to the actions that uh, staff may have taken. We're backdating authorities. That's what we're doing. You can't say it's not backdating. Of course it's backdating. But Mr. Mayor, through you, I, I disagree with that language. I, I would suggest to you, and uh, in my, my opinion, it is not backdating. It is simply giving retroactive effect, ratification to the actions that council, uh, that staff have taken in order to protect uh, uh, risk to the municipality. Uh, and I'm not uh, also going to agree, Councillor Frey, that this is setting a precedent. I think quite honestly, the comments that, that, that I've heard so far is I think you're making it abundantly clear that you do not want this to happen again. And so I think if anything, you're, you're setting a precedent that this will not happen again, as opposed to uh, saying, oh, okay. Uh, and to borrow your words, I don't think it's a willy nilly uh, um, uh, 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 approval that you're giving tonight. I think you're giving some very serious consideration to what you're uh, you're about to do or not to do, uh, I I see this all the time. Uh, quite honestly, uh, with all sorts of things that maybe actions have been taken in order to ensure that there is no harm, no uh, other risk attendant to the municipality, and that council says, okay, uh, we we are now ratifying those actions. It it happens more frequently than you would think. And. Um, Follow up to that. I mean, we've actually sent people to the bank who who practically kind of gave false statements. I mean, that they were they were signing authorities or or set up signing authority when they didn't have the authority to do that. I mean, how how does how do you how do you speak to that? Uh, again, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, it, it was done so. In fact, I was asked, "What can we do?" Uh, and I had, I believe, at the time, an indication that the bank. Uh, would authorize this, would, would, would indicate that this would be an appropriate act to do. And in fact, the bank could have said, no, we're just not accepting this at this time. Uh, the bank indicated, yeah, we, we will accept this uh, on this basis, uh, recognizing that council had to possibly come back, or possibly had to come back to ratify the, the actions. Uh, if you don't do it, then you don't do it. But I believe that the bank had uh, clearly that they weren't they weren't telling you what to do. I think they were indicating that they would understand, they understood what was happening, and that they would uh, agree to to doing this, uh, knowing that it could be all put in place and in order by the ratification of council at a future date. Well, I mean, don't, then we then maybe we should be questioning the banks. 
uh, you know, uh, process as well. I mean, because they just accepted it. They accepted it without, without approval of council. So should we not be questioning the banks, the banks uh, actions as well? It's a question for John. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Councilor Frank, I'm, I think the bank was just trying to uh, to work with you. Uh, I was just trying to work with a customer. Uh, suppose you could go back to the bank and say to them, uh, how did you possibly accept this? Uh, I think they would have said, we would have thought that you would ratify it at a future date. Well, anyways, it, 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 it's a simple solution is turned into a very complicated one and a very obviously uh, difficult uh, situation for everybody to handle here. So. Anyways, I, I, I think we should uh, alter the the, resi the uh, resolution or the bylaw as per Councillor Bothwell's suggestions. So I'll leave it at that and I'll, maybe I'll come back for a second round later. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. CAO, your hand's still up. Did you want to speak? Yes, uh, Mayor, if I may, just a few comments on timing. Um, so on March 31st, you know, I made the conscious decision that the two signatories be approved by the bank. Uh, but also, if you look at timelines, the key thing was to get a treasurer appointed. So we did that together within three work business days. Um, a treasurer was appointed on April the 6th. I knew that when we brought in the treasurer, I wanted her to look at not only going forward on, on issues, but also looking back. And as you, if, you know, Melanie has advised you that she's looked back at everything that was done from March 31st on. And, um, and found everything to be in order. All the best interest to eliminating the operational risk at the time. This was a big, large, extraordinary change and we had to act quickly. So as far as timing, I felt I moved as quickly as I could. And, uh, you know, could I have done better for sure, but I didn't have a treasurer on board till April the 6th and I wanted to work with that individual to ensure that we did everything right going forward and, and back. Thank you. Councillor Cadwell. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Jordan. And uh, I'm just going to be brief. I just wrote down three comments. I'll be reading through them. Um, I voted to defer the original resolution to get a better clarification to the resolution with regards to the banking signing authorities and any potential risk to the town. This report states that the formal, the formal legal opinion approving a bylaw with retroactive application date back to March 30th. The bank worked with staff through, through the transition showing everything is in order. I found this report to be objective and factual and I will be supporting this staff report. That's all I'm gonna say, thank you. Councillor Dunstall. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a, <clears throat> a couple of comments. Uh, very happy with Melanie's report. It's very thorough and she's done a, a great job at uh, bringing us up to date. Um, happy with the explanation that our CAO has given us and uh, quite happy to vote for the resolution the way it is. I do not see we need to amend it. We've had good legal advice here too and I don't see what's wrong with the way the, uh, way the motion is. So we'll, I'll be voting for it the way it is. Councillor Vardy. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is for CAO Schlang. Um, why didn't you contact the mayor? Because that that's sort of your first uh, primary contact and the most logical step. Why didn't you take that step? Yeah. Through you, Mayor. Um, I was looking purely at the operations. I'm in charge of the operations. My main worry was the operational risk at the time. So in evaluating and assessing everything quickly on that morning, uh, I just felt I had to move forward operationally and I'm in charge of the operations. It was by no means a way to ignore the mayor. So it was just what, you know, there was a lot of moving parts at that time and I had to move quickly to make it's, sure it's... there was no operational risk. But as far as the two signatories I selected, I stand by those. 
the most senior finance person. I understand and, that. Yeah, and it just seems to me that the most logical choice uh, that you disregarded the mayor and, and that is inappropriate to my mind. Uh, that would have made this uh, much cleaner. He should be your main point of contact. Uh, and just saying, you know, uh, I take full responsibility doesn't, doesn't make it right. Um, and and I, I'm very disappointed in the actions that you, that you took when something that's so simple where you could have just contacted the mayor uh, and it, it could have been rectified. The mayor's always available. So that's one thing. Uh, two, I'm not comfortable signing things retroactively. And what's worrisome, I mean, I don't, I don't know the next thing you're gonna do and say mea culpa, I'm, you know, I, I take full responsibility and now let's just sign this re retroactively so we can go forward with whatever I've done. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that, with that at all. Um, I don't see why we don't just make, make this clean now and, uh, and just move forward with today's date. And, and I guess my final question is for, um, is for Melanie Steele, our treasurer. Um, have you discussed this matter uh, with, uh, with any of the councillors uh, prior to this meeting? And if so, who have you talked, talked with about it? Um, the only counselor that reached out to me was Councillor Cadwell, and he reached out yesterday to ask a few clarification questions on the report, which I answered, and, and that's the only counselor that I've spoken to. Obviously, last week, we worked together with Mayor Jordan. Um, we were doing some check signatures, and we included him in that process. So he would have been, you know, received some of these briefings verbally last week through that process, but those are the only two counselors I spoke with. Yeah, and what about emails? I have no no emails um, on this matter between any counselors and myself. All right, thank you. Councillor Sharp. Thanks, Mayor Jordan. Um, I'd like to call the question. Under our procedural bylaws, before uh, everyone's spoken twice, we need a two thirds vote to uh, call the to call the question. So we need to vote on that. I'm sorry, Mayor Jordan, should my motion not be on the floor as well? And then for yes, the second? Yes. That's correct as well. I'd like to call the question. We know. Yeah. That motion precedes the question, right? What motion? A motion to amend the bylaw to ratify the appointments as of April 26th, not March 30th. That was on the Is floor, that a motion? Council Sharp. Was it, it was seconded? On the floor. It, was it wasn't seconded. Draft, it was asked to be drafted to be presented. But it wasn't seconded. And the clerk, I asked to call the question. Which comes first? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So the clerk has just told me procedurally uh, the motion to call the question uh, goes first. So we vote on that first. It needs two thirds to pass. All right, I have a mover, Councillor Sharp, need a seconder to um, call the question. Councillor Vane. Moved by Councillor Sharp, second by Councillor Vane, resolved that the main motion be called to question. And that need, requires a two thirds and it's a recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell? No. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? No. Councillor Cadwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? Yes. Councillor Vane? Yes. Councillor Vardy? No. Mayor Jordan? No. That's defeated. So now we move to the amendment. 
And I'll, and I'll second that amendment. Thank you, Councillor Frank. Councillor Ritchie, you'd like to speak on that? Yeah, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. Just another question to, um, to our treasurer. So in your review, um, you did not find any wrongdoings whatsoever. Um, everything seems to be in order. Uh, and now we're looking to move forward, is that correct? So through the mayor, um, what I did in my review is I looked at every payment and check that was issued from March 31st to today. Um, I validated that against appropriate backup. I confirmed that the, the people who were signing were appropriate um, based on the operational situations. So I, I didn't notice anything through review of all of those payments through this time period that were inappropriate. Obviously I've outlined um, you know, the inconsistencies between the bylaw and what was happening. But when I look at the substance of what was done as far as signing checks or, or electronic fund transfers, there was nothing that stood out to me as inappropriate. Thank you. So with, with you stating that and having our, our legal here stating that everything seems to be in order and good, I won't be supporting this amendment. I will be supporting the report as is, thank you. Councillor Frank. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, in response to Councillor Ritchie and back to Melanie, uh, it, it's not the wrongdoing that bothers me, it's what wasn't done that bothers me. And we didn't follow the procedures that are in place. And that's why I would like to endorse this um, amendment by Councillor Bothwell. So it's, it's not the wrongdoing, it's what wasn't done and should have been done procedurally. I just wanna make that clear and, and that's so that the public knows that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sharp, I think you're next. Can we call a question? We'll vote to call the question again because uh, only uh, one person has spoken on it. So, uh, or two people have spoken on it. So uh, we can vote again to call the question. You're welcome to put another resolution forward to call the question. Yeah. No, I withdraw. But I do wanna say, um, so this, this dialogue that's going on here seems to me like a bit of a witch hunt and, um, you know, staff has just done their best to, to make sure that the paychecks get paid and that our, that the, the business of the town can move forward in a change of our organization. And, um, I see, um, some counselors who, in my opinion, already disapprove, um, that are, that are just trying to throw mud around. That's my opinion. And uh, I wanna just get to the question and I, I wanna just pass this resolution. Point of order, I, I, I don't- Council, Councilor Barty, it, it's fine. Uh, Councilor Barty, uh, it's overruled. Uh, he's he's welcome to his opinion. Uh, Throwing mud around? Uh, you know what, it's his opinion. And, yeah, um, and he, he's, he's already calling the question. He doesn't want debate on it, in my opinion. Uh, so he uh, he wants to uh, lessen the debate on this subject, and I think it's very important to have a full and open debate. Uh, we're almost a month later, and uh, and we haven't solved something that uh, could have been solved April first. During we actually had a special council meeting on April first. Something could have been done then to at least put a stopgap in um, for those days between March thirtieth and. April 6th when we uh, had uh, a corporate resolution with the TD Bank, but we didn't have a council resolution to back up that corporate resolution. So just Mayor Jordan, before you cut me off, I, I just was saying, um, but, and know, then you which, mentioned- which hunt. Yeah, you were, that's what you're saying. Yeah, and then you mentioned that um, this has been like three weeks, but this was deferred. Uh, could I have the clerk give me the recorded vote of who well, I, 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 real, I realize it was deferred. Mayor Jordan, stop well, cutting me off. I'm speaking. Mayor Jordan, stop it. That's your first warning. Can the clerk, excuse me, Mayor Jordan, may, can the clerk please just give me that um, recorded vote? For the yeah. deferral to, to move this back to me. The clerk, the clerk's I'm offended by his behavior. 
chairing yeah. the meeting anyways. Yeah, Councillor Sharp. Yeah, that, that was your first warning, your formal you warning. So You're, you shouldn't be uh, participating in debate unless you leave the chair. You I have, wasn't participating yeah. in the you debate. You have the right to to rule, but you did join in the debate and made statements, which which is also inappropriate. If you'd like to join in the debate, you can you can leave the chair and ask the, the deputy to take over. I'll 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 just chair the meeting. Thank you. Huh. Okay, so then through the chair, could I ask the clerk to please? The clerk is the looking it up now, Councillor Sharp. Room. The clerk is looking it up now, if you would let me speak. Yeah, we're going to just have to wait because the clerk's having to look it up. So the point I was making, if if I have the moment while we're waiting, is that um, two weeks of the, of this wait time was due to the deferral, which I believe that Mayor Jordan voted in favor of. Councillor Ritchie, just a point of clarification, if I may. The people that voted on deferring felt, and even Councillor Cadwell felt that same way, that there needed to be more questions answered. And that's why we're here today. And so, the, but when the point was brought up by the mayor, of which I felt like you shouldn't have been participating in the debate, but that, that point that you put, put into the debate was that this has been three weeks afterwards, uh, at least half of that wait time has been due to the deferral. And so that Councilor was as a result Councilor of- Sharp, we can go around and round in circles here. The point is- That's what I think we are doing is going around in circles. And I, I want to just- Yes, get to you the, are. I'll support the motion as is. Thank you. Speak. Yeah. Am I Sarah? Sorry. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So just to clarify, there was a motion on April 19th, which was defeated. Uh, there was a motion to pass a mo uh, motion which stated resolve that report finance 2106 banking signing authorities dated April 19, 2021 be received and that the and that updates to the banking signing authorities bylaw 2128 as outlined in appendix A be approved and that the bylaw to appoint banking signing officers be approved at the April 19th council meeting. And yes, I have Councillor Dunstall, Councillor Ritchie, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Vane. And for no, I have Councillor Bothwell, Councillor Frake, Councillor Cadwell, Councillor Vardy and the Mayor Jordan and Mayor Jordan. And then there was, was there a deferral motion? Or no, it wasn't deferred, it was just defeated. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's right, my apologies. It was defeated by those uh, individuals, not um, deferred. So we had the opportunity more than a week ago and um, the amendment now comes up a week later and um, I voted in favor. And we have a legal opinion that that was an appropriate thing to do. So that's what I'll do again tonight. Councillor Bothwell. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. I will just uh, reiterate, um, Melanie, I'm gonna need you to clarify this as well, that the bylaw that was presented to us on April 19th was faulty. It had incorrect information in it. And had it been passed, it would not have been valid. It had the town manager in that when we don't have a town manager, we have a chief executive officer. It also had titles in there for manager procurement, which was not valid. It was any manager within finance. There was a number of things that you found in that bylaw that you have amended in this version. And had we passed it, it would not have been correct. Is that true? So through the mayor, um, I, I don't know that I would go quite that far. I think that we clarified some language. So in the previous version that we presented to you, we said um, any one manager of finance and there was some interpretation question around who the managers in finance were. Um, and so we've clarified that language for you in the bylaw that's in front of you this evening um, with the intent of making that more clear so that there wasn't the need to interpret the bylaw. 
Um, so that's really the main clarification. And as a result of that, we also clarified some titles to make sure they were 100% in alignment with the titles in your, your organizational structure. Um, I, had you have passed the bylaw last week, I, I don't know that that would have been faulty. Um, the intent of that bylaw, I think, is very consistent with the bylaw that you have in front of you this evening. But obviously, I'm, I'm not a lawyer and, and can't speak to that. But it would not have agreed with what was on file with the bank. We have the chief executive officer on file with the bank, and we have a resolution that says town manager when he is not appointed as a town manager. So is that not a discrepancy right there? Yes. So through the mayor, I would say that the titling is inconsistent. I believe that the bank would, incur had that have been passed, um, those titles are, um, you know, they, they go hand in hand and they're used interchangeably across the sector. No, they're not. No, they're not. Excuse me. They're not interchangeable. And, and the bank has clearly said in their documents that the title must be specific to the person who's signing and owns it. It says those like that's basically what it says in the resolution, the corporate resolution. So I would not agree with you uh, respectfully that any title can be put on a banking resolution and the bylaw can differentiate from it. And, and I would not say that you can interchangeably use those. So I would respectfully disagree with you on that. So I appreciate that. The other point I just wanted to make about the um, the, the the lawyer's letter, actually Don Maskren's letter, was that he makes a statement here that is very clear. These actions should be ratified by council to ensure that there is no issue as to whether the town had authority to take such actions. By that statement, I would ask Mr. Maskren that is he implying that there is an issue? Because he wouldn't, you know, why would he say to ensure that there is no issue as to whether the town had authority to take such actions? So I would just, I would just put that, um, ask Mr. Maskren that question. Thank you. Yeah, Don? Yes, Mr. Mayor to Councillor Botswell. Yeah, I wrote that on purpose because I suppose someone could come back and say, hey, those weren't the correct signing authorities. You didn't have the uh, resolution of council at the time. And so there could be a question uh, as to whether uh, they were correct or not. So I, I don't disagree with you. Thank you very much. Councillor Cadwell. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan. Uh, clarification, I did vote uh, to defeat the resolution. Get rid of that thing. Oh, well. I'll leave it for now. Because uh, I needed, I wanted to get more information and I'm very happy with the information that, that is in this report. Uh, to talk about the resolution uh, a week ago, it, it, you know what, it was, it was voted by council to defeat it. So, it's defeated. So let's let's try to move forward here with this report, giving the uh, giving good information that I, I think is what I was looking for. So uh, I don't know. We're just keep going back and forth, back and forth. Let's let's try to move forward. Those are my comments. Thank you. CAO. And through you, Mayor. Um, I respect Council's comments when they disagree with our advice, but. I would hope that you would work with me that some counselors stop attacking personally and just disagree maybe with, with our research, but I strongly support what Melanie and the team has done in their report. I respect that council could disagree with it, but saying she's personally disagreeing with someone that has expert uh, subject matter expert in this field is, I'm just hoping you could work with me that it's not personal, it's more about the issue at hand. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't see anything personal there, but uh, seeing no further questions, I'll move, I'll read the amended resolution. Moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Frake. Resolve that report FIN 21-08 Banking Signing Authorities dated April 26, 2021 be received and that- Point updates. of information, Mayor Jordan. Um, are we, the motion isn't amended yet. We're voting on whether or not to, to amend the motion. The motion hasn't no, been amended. I, I would like to vote on whether or not we're going to amend the motion. Okay. Yeah. So I read this, right? Yeah. Thanks. I'll continue. I'll start over actually, Councillor Sharp. Could you answer my Move. point of information? 
Yeah, was the clerk. It, was the this clerk, an I'll, I'll, Councilor Sharp, stop interrupting, please. Point of information, was this amended or was this not amended before right. you read it? Why do you keep asking me? I'm trying to talk to the clerk now. All right. Through you, Mr. Bayer, uh, there was a motion to amend and we have a mover and seconder on that. So that motion has to be addressed first. So for to the clerk, are we Absolutely. now voting on the motion to amend or are we voting on the motion as amended? Because I heard the mayor read the motion as amended. And I don't remember voting on whether or not to amend the motion. So who's the mover and seconder on that one? So what we need to do, we need to have a mover and seconder on the main motion and they can um, move it. Sorry, Mayor, point of clarity. Yes. My motion was the only motion on the floor. There was no other motion on the floor. Yeah, so, so this motion, motion takes precedent. My motion would be the main motion because yeah. there was another motion. So the clerk's ruling that the recommendation is the main motion? Right. Councilor Ritchie, did you want to comment? Uh, I just wanted to know, do you need a seconder for the main motion? Yeah, you want to second it, I suppose. Sure, I'll second it. So, do we... So now I ask, is the mover and seconder agreeable to a friendly amendment? No. No. A point, point of clarity again, Mayor. I didn't think staff could bring forward motions. I thought only council members could bring forward motions. That's a recommendation in the report, but there's no, they can't bring forward a motion. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to have to confer with the clerk on this and, and uh, get a ruling. Mayor, if I may, Councillor Boff will put a motion to amend. If there's no motion on the floor, then her motion doesn't stand either. So you it have was, a. First it was to amend the bylaw, Councillor Rich. No, you don't. No. It, so it was you, to amend the bylaw. No, it was not to amend the bylaw. Go back and listen to the tape. All right, because we have a mover and seconder on a motion to amend, um, we can address the motion to amend first. And then um, if it's defeated, uh, move back to the main motion. All right. Yeah. All right. So the main the motion to amend is moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Frey. Resolve that report FIN 21 08 
Banking Signing Authorities dated April 26, 2021 be received and that updates to the Banking Signing Authorities through amended bylaw 1637 as outdated, out, outlined in Appendix A without Section 6 allowing a retroactive effect be approved and that the amended bylaw appoint banking signing officers without Section 6 be approved at the April 26, 2021 Council meeting. Recorded vote. Any discussion? No. Councillor Bothwell? Yes. Councillor Dunstall? No. Councillor Frake? Yes. Councillor Cadwell? No. Councillor Ritchie? No. Councillor Sharp? No. Councillor Vane? No. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Mayor Jordan? Yes. That's defeated. All right. So now we move back to the main motion. Moved by Councillor Sharp, second by Councillor Ritchie. Result that report FIN 21-08 Banking Signing Authorities dated April 26, 2021 be received and that updates to the Banking Signing Authorities through amended bylaw 1637 as outlined in Appendix A be approved and that the amended bylaw to appoint Banking Signing Officers be approved at the April 26, 2021 Council meeting. Recorded vote. Mr. Mayor, could I just have a point of clarification from the clerk? Yes. Um, Sarah, if, if I believe that this motion is not, not legal, um, am I better off to abstain or vote no? I mean, is, is uh, I, I, I don't want to give it credit by voting on it in a, or, I mean, what's the proper procedure here? Well, if you do abstain, it is rec uh, recorded in the negative, but if you do have any legal concern or uh, legal counsel is here, so if you wanted that addressed, maybe John can do so. Uh, John, John, if I'm really uncomfortable with this, um, is an abstain, is an abstention a better way to reflect that than a no vote? Um, Mr. Mayor, is the, the question now directed to me, Councillor Vardy? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, Councillor Vardy, if you're at the council table, uh, if you do not vote, it goes to the negative. So an abstention is not, is not really uh, uh, the proper course. You have to leave the meeting to uh, to show your um, your your um, you know, lack of uh, agreement with what's happening, but if you stay here, uh, the as as the the clerk has pointed out, the fact that you abstain just means it goes to the negative. Okay, all right, thank you, Councillor Sharp. Thanks, Mayor Jordan. Um, to John Muskerin, I just wanted to clarify, you said earlier that this motion or this recommendation is legal. To you, Mr. Mayor, yes, that's correct. Okay, so in case Councillor Vardy was, was wondering, we have a lawyer here and he says that it is legal. And um, so a vote to the, to the negative or an abstention is a vote to the negative or an abstention. And... Um, it's not a a symbol, and so if you're looking for a symbol, um, I don't know where you're going to find that. But uh, I'd like to, if everyone's willing like to call the to question move forward, I don't think I need Councillor Sharp to explain things to me. Thank you. So you, Mr. No, thank you, Councillor. The resolution was read and now we had a recorded vote requested. So I'll be reading the names. Councillor Bothwell? No. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? Definitely no. Councillor Catwell? No. No, sorry, yes. Sorry, I apologize. I'm supporting the, uh, I'm supporting the report from staff. Okay. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? 
Yes. Councilor Vane? Yes. Councilor Vardy? Nope. Mayor Jordan? No. That's carried. Where are we? Come on. All right. All right, we're moving to uh, number 5A, uh, report BYL 21-03, appointment of property standards committee. Need a mover and seconder to get it on the floor. Moved by Councillor Bothwell. Seconder, Councillor Vane. Right. I didn't second it, sorry. I saw your hand up in the air. But... Sorry, I was moving a paper, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. So you're not seconding it. All right, uh, Councillor Sharp is. Any discussion? Councillor Bothwell. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, and thank you to staff for putting this report together. I appreciate that they've uh, um, they've dealt with it um, as, as it was in the third list when I brought it forward, um, that we didn't have um, a, property, a property standards committee actually in place um, and appointed as, as per the requirements. So this is good to see. Um, the only question I have um, and of course, the Committee of Adjustment would historically be the best, uh, the best group to do this as well, and that makes sense. But to Henry, um, we're not amending the bylaw. So just to confirm, this means that every term of council, we have to ensure that this is a carry forward item that we appoint the Committee of Adjustment as the Property Standards uh, Appeal Committee. Is that correct? That we have to make sure this is done. Uh, right now, we're doing catch up to the beginning of term uh, basically, we're appointing them as of today, but it's because we didn't have it in place. But as of the new council in 2022, this will be something that will be on the agenda be, to be brought forward. Is that correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know is that it's it's something we're going to do in a timely manner moving forward. And I much appreciate that. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or comments, moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Sharp, resolve the report BYL 21-03 dated April 26, 2021 be received and that the Committee of Adjustment be appointed as the Property Standards Committee for this term of council and that no changes be made to the Property Standards Bylaw. All in favor? It's carried. Now we move to uh, report PA 2020 or 2120 LPAT appeal 11 Lakeview. Need a mover and seconder to get it on the floor. Moved by Councillor Bothwell. Seconder, Councillor Cadwell. And Councillor Bothwell, you wanted to comment? Some quick questions to um, uh, Mr. Basic. Um, I, I reviewed the Committee of Adjustment tape on this particular property and, and I recognize that it's gone to LPAT. I just had a couple of questions because the notice that was circulated to uh, the neighbors uh, indicated that it was a request for um, reconstruction of a legal non-conforming garage. And then the decision goes into reconstruction of garage for the purposes of providing additional living space or something. Would it be normal to advise the community of what the actual intent of the change or the minor variance was? Because it didn't turn out that it, it was, it's going to be a garage. It's actually going to be in addition to the house as living space. It's one question. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um... The, uh, the application, and I believe the notice, maybe you can read it to me if you have it handy, but I don't. Um, uh, I believe the purpose of the application was to reconstruct uh, a building with the same setback as the existing building. I think that was the intent of the application. So when it was circulated to neighbors, they would have received the notice that said, per proposal, reconstruction of existing legal non-conforming garage. 
So I think the neighbors would have thought, oh, that nice little one story little garage, they're just gonna take it down and put up a nice little one story garage. So I just wondered, it, it evolved. And then the notice of decision says, purpose of application, reconstruction of existing legal non-conforming garage for the purposes of providing additional living space, but that wasn't, wouldn't have been provided to the community. So I just wondered how, how that, when that happens, how do you handle that when the change of, when it's a change of use? Um, again, the intent of the application was to permit a reduced side yard uh, that was in the, that's proposed to be in the same location as the existing building. So what's inside of the building isn't as relevant as where the wall is relative to the lot length. That's the purpose of the application. The purpose of the application is to determine whether or not the wall location is appropriate, not what's on the other side of the wall. So it's not- what's on, the, what's on the other side of the wall isn't relevant to the application. So it was a legal non-conforming um, use, the garage, because of its um, setback from the side yard. Um, and now it's no longer a legal non-conforming garage. It's a legal, it'll, it'll end up becoming a legal addition with a reduced side yard setback. Is that correct? The location of the building was legal non-conforming. Anytime any new construction is required to conform to the new requirements, that was the need for the uh, minor variance application. Perfect. Is to permit new construction even if it's in the same location as an existing building, it's to, uh, it's to permit the new construction in the location of the existing building. And that was the intent of the application. Thank you. Just two other quick things. Um, just wondered if the eaves are encroaching into the point eight. <coughs> you know, if there's, um, because there's a language in the zoning bylaw about eave encroachments as well. Do you know if they're encroaching into that point eight? The, point of order. The, Should we be discussing this if this was a decision made by the, the committee of adjustment that's going to LPAT? Our opinions here in conversation, could this not have a negative effect on us or put the town in, in some kind of predicament? And the last question was just, I don't know if the committee dealt with it or not, but now that it's not a garage, and it's used as living space. The zoning bylaw talks about driveway width and it says where there's no garage, the maximum driveway width is six meters, but this driveway width is 7.55. So would there be a requirement for them to reduce the driveway width because there's no longer a garage, the, a usable garage? I don't know if the previous building was a usable garage and whether or not it met the minimum requirements for an internal parking space. But now it has to meet 1445. So that says maximum of six meters, right? I haven't looked at that. You maybe you can you can bring it to my attention. I can look at that and report back to you if you like. Yeah. Uh, by way of email, if you like. Yeah, it's just I read it in the report that it said that the width of the driveway would come. You mentioned four cars and it's 7.55 meters. And I thought, well, it's not a it's not a garage yeah. anymore. Right. Yeah, the width, the driveway width is existing. Uh, they're not changing the driveway width. Uh, that's existing. Uh, I believe it's paved also. Um, so the uh, the that question that was raised at the committee was uh, with uh, would the requirement for the provision of parking spaces on site uh, does the site still meet the requirements of parking? Uh, the minimum requirement of two parking spaces that's in the zoning bylaw. And my conclusion was that it does meet there, there is sufficient room on the driveway on the existing driveway to meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw. And I believe I said there were four parking spaces that met zoning uh, dimensional requirements on the driveway. Great. Are we expecting any planning staff to be at that LPAT hearing or not? I'll be there if requested. Okay, thank you. Antonetta, you wanted to speak? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm just going to kindly request this request through as an information request on the status of 11 Lakeview and the LPAT hearing. We have provided that. If there's more specific questions, if I could kindly ask that they be sent to us in advance so that we can prepare instead of sort of being put on the spot to remember 
details or potentially if this level of detail is going to be discussed, then we wouldn't want to compromise the town's position in any future hearings. So I would just kindly ask councillors, if you have specific questions, please send them to us. We'd be happy to answer them. Uh, we provided a simple report based on what was initially asked of us. This is a lot more detail and information, which again, we're happy to provide, but we don't want to compromise sort of the town's position in the future. And we want to be able to provide you our absolute best information. So I would just kindly ask that please let us know what you're looking for. We're happy to provide that to you. Thank you. Councillor Vardy. Uh, thank you. I, I just want to, I just have a question so that I can understand and it's probably more general. Um, I personally have a conforming garage. Can I, can I just turn it into living space? Would I just ask for what I would just need a permit to do that? Is that a question of me through you, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, I mean, uh, you or Antoinette, I don't care. I just like an answer. Yeah, I'd be I'd, I'd be happy to answer your question if you can provide me the details uh, in an email. I could uh, respond. No, to no, you. no. I'm just asking you a hypothetical. I've got a garage. Oh. It's a conform like it's it's a conforming garage, and I want to turn it into living space. Would I need Would I need to get a permit to do that? Yeah, you would definitely need a permit. Okay. And whether or not, and whether or not it would conform to zoning requirements would depend on a number of factors, and I don't know what those are. Okay, I don't know so, what the circumstances of your lot are. So if you provide me with further details, then I can. Okay, respond. I'm not. I'm not looking to do this. I'm just trying to understand the process. So then, would whoever who you know, if someone did need a, a variance, um, and maybe they sought a minor variance, would they also then need a building permit? If, if uh, the building code required you to, if the building code required you to apply for a building permit, then you would need a building permit. Okay, thanks. Councillor Cadwell. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor Jordan. I just want to thank uh, uh, Antoinette for her comments because uh, in the past, when we've been dealing with any uh, committee of adjustments uh, issues. And uh, back in the old days when they went to the OMB hearing, we never discussed anything like this uh, in, in, in a public realm. We always either emailed staff to get information. So I think that's the, uh, the right way to do business. And I, I did sit on the Committee of Adjustments before I got elected. So I have a little bit of background knowledge to that. So yeah, it's, uh, the best thing is, is, is reach out to staff. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or comments, moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Cadwell. Resolve that report PA 21 20, ALPAD Appeal 11 Lakeview, dated April 26, 2021, be received as information. All in favor? It's carried. Need a mover and seconder for first reading of bylaws. Moved by Councillor Vane, second by Councillor Sharp. Moved by Councillor Vane, second by Councillor Sharp. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaw 12 31 and that same be read a first time. All in favor? It's carried. Need a mover and seconder for the second and third reading. Councillor Dunstall, Councillor Sharp. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, second by Councillor Sharp. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaw 12-31 read a first time, now be read a second and third time and finally pass and the mayor and the town clerk do sign and seal the same and rule Council to the contrary, notwithstanding. All in favor? It's carried. Our next council meeting is scheduled. Oh, did 
Do we need this bylaw first or no, we did that, we did that. All right, next council meeting is scheduled for May 3rd, 2021, following the community of the whole meeting. And now we're moving into closed session under section 2392D, labor relations or employee negotiations, proposed changes to town of Grinsby enforcement. Read the electronic participation, uh, closed session statement declaration. Good evening, members of council. Before we begin the closed session, all members are reminded that any discussions in close are to remain confidential as per our procedural bylaw and our code of conduct for the council of the town of Grinsby. Before we begin, I need each, each member that is attending electronically to confirm the following, that you understand that matters are to remain confidential and confirm that no one else is present with you and confirm no one else can hear this closed session and confirm that you are not using any electronic devices other than your tablet or computer for the purposes of this video conferencing only, and confirm that you're not recording this portion of the meeting. If you acknowledge all of the above, please reply with, I understand and confirm to all of the statements. Councillor Bothwell? I understand and confirm to all the statements. Councillor Dunstall? I understand and confirm to all the statements. Councillor Frake? I understand and confirm to all the statements. Councillor Cadwell? I understand and confirm to all the statements. Councillor Ritchie? I understand and confirm to all of the statements. Councillor Sharp? I understand I confirm to all except the electronic. Councillor Vane? I understand and confirm all the statements. Councillor Vardy? I understand and confirm to all the statements. And myself, I understand and confirm to all the statements. Need a mover and seconder to go into closed. Councillor Dunstall, Councillor Cadwell. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, second by Councillor Cadwell. Resolve that council meet in closed session regarding the following. Under section 2392D, labor relations or employee negotiations, proposed changes to the town and Grinsby enforcement. All in favor to go into closed? That's carried. Now in closed.
session. Grinsby's back on. Just need a mover and seconder to uh, move what we decided and closed. Moved by Councillor Bain, second by Councillor Cadwell. Moved by Councillor Bain, second by Councillor Cadwell. Resolved that confidential report BYL 2102 be received and staff proceed as directed in closed session with regard to proposed changes to town against reinforcement. All in favor? That's carried. Mover and seconder needed to uh, give uh, first reading of bylaw 2130. Councillor Vardy, Councillor Dunstall. Moved by Councillor Vardy, second by Councillor Dunstall. Resolve that leave be given to introduce bylaw 21 30 and that same be read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. Need a mover and seconder for second and third reading. Moved by Councillor Bain, second by Councillor Sharp. Moved by Councillor Bain, second by Councillor Sharp. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaw 21 30, read a first time, now be read a second and third time, and finally passed, and that the mayor and town clerk do sign and seal the same and rule council to the contrary, notwithstanding. All in favor? That's carried. As I said, next meeting will be uh, on May 3rd, following the Committee of the Whole. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone.